Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Lynn Leahy. I've been working with Vistage and before that tech groups for about 14 years. I run five sessions. I haven't got time to go through all five. So just to tell you briefly, I've just designed a new one on, on emotional intelligence. Um, I've been running a session on coaching skills, which can be run in a half day session, but I think it works best when you've got a bit more time like a retreat. Um, I've also run a session on managing stress in self and others. And although it's not popular in the sense of people often choosing it, when I've run it, I think that's had a really big impact. So I just mentioned that for what it's worth. The two that have been most popular is a session I run on building exceptional teams and one on handling conflict effectively. I've also been working for four years with tech groups in um, Australia and New Zealand, and they particularly like these sessions as well. So I'm just going to give you a really brief insight into some of the core of these. Now, when I designed the one on building exceptional teams, I was really motivated to do it because I've been training for about 23 years and I've worked with hundreds of teams at every level, shop floor, board level. And what I've found is if teams get certain building blocks right, ordinary people can achieve the most extraordinary things. But trying to break that knowledge down into something manageable, that's, that was the task. I've drawn on my own experience. I've drawn on some of the key research by people like Richard Hackman and Woodcock. Um, and what I've done is I've pulled together 12 building blocks that in my experience, if a team gets right, then you've got a chance of having a really high performing team. And what I do in the session is I just explain them very briefly, give an overview of them, give a sheet with them all out, written on it, and I ask each member to just trust the gut, gut instinct really and scale somewhere between 0 and 10 where they believe the team they lead, so normally we focus on the executive team or it's a small company, we could think about the whole company, where they sit against each block. Now for this actually to truly work, they should really go back to camp and do this with the whole team because otherwise they've got the problem of, I suppose, the blind spots that can come from self-scoring. But if they go back and get every member of the team to do it as well, and particularly if they could have it, an independent person collate it, what's great is you end up with what the team perceive to be the areas that they're not strong on and what they, they're weak in. And we also see where there's any real range. So, you know, say something like one of the building blocks is trust. Now, it might not end up in the bottom three with an average score, but if you've got somebody in the team who thinks it's two and somebody who thinks it's nine, you've got a problem. A perceived problem is a problem. So we know that when we start looking at the lower blocks, we also have to include any that have this strange range. And particularly if you've involved the team in it, you've got people who are just really motivated to work on it because it's not what somebody else has told. It's not what I've told them is wrong or what the boss has told them is wrong. It's what they, they collectively have decided needs to be worked on. In the session, we can only work with what the leader's perception is. So they then take the, the bottom three blocks and with the support and challenge of other Vistage members around them, they, they work out just practically what they can do within a month. That they, they can control that if they did, they believe it would have some impact on this particular block. And We've had some wonderful creative ideas from people about how they can start to move some of the blocks up. Um, I also do give a lot of input around how to improve certain blocks, you know, from my own experience. So, for example, I've mentioned trust is one of them. Trust is so easily broken. It's broken by hearsay all the time. It's broken because somebody gets overstressed and because they're a bit overstressed or a bit snotty with somebody and that never gets resolved and somebody stacks the grudge bag about that. So, one of the, the building blocks that has a massive impact on trust, however, is one called openness and a willingness to confront issues. And in fact, all the research has shown that if you had to take any block and say, if one of them had a high score, which, which block with a high score could indicate this team is going to be successful? And that's the one, because it means every other block is pushed. So, I actually do a lot of work on how you can encourage teams to be much more open, even with a leader, which people find really scary. I also run a session on handling conflict effectively. I draw my experience, I'm an accredited mediator, I do a lot of work in, in companies. I also have a history as a, a family and marital counsellor. So what I'm looking at is relevant to both conflict at work and conflict personally. And 
One of the key things I want people to understand is a conflict of ideas is really healthy. I'm not saying any conflict's wrong. I'm talking about when that conflict of ideas results in somebody withdrawing or kind of getting a bit sharp with each other, um, there's a breakdown in communications. And this seminar is, is designed to help you really understand what you can do on two levels. One, what can you do to reduce the chances of this really unhealthy form of conflict ever kicking in? And if sadly, even whatever you do, it does, how can you handle it really well? And I offer a lot of, you know, sort of case stories from my own experience of what makes the difference. And just as a very brief insight into it, one of the, I suppose, the core concepts on that course is about really getting people to understand you can't change anybody else. That's the bad news. You can only change yourself. And let's say A is you, and B is another person, them, and C is the outcome that you get when you and them get together. Now, in my experience, if we look at A and B, and we really like C, that's great. Don't analyse it, just enjoy it. But sometimes you look at an A and a B and you think, I don't like this outcome I'm getting. But then what most people do is spend all the time and energy focusing on them, talking to anybody who will listen about them and why they're a pain in the bum and if they'd be different, everything would be great. And it's human and absolutely nothing changes because the only thing you've got control over is yourself. So a really big part of this seminar is helping people stay focused on A. What can they actually do? And there's a lot of skills, there's a lot of personal awareness, things like understanding your drivers, which can help you sometimes understand that just thinking something different or doing something different can have a major impact. And one of the other key things I help people realise is so often, when they, when they think about handling a difficult situation, they keep thinking about, they practice in their mind of what they're going to say. But all the research has shown that your words, your actual words, only contribute 7% to how somebody perceives you. The biggest impact on them is your tone of voice and your body language. And the hard thing is our tone of voice and our body language, they're largely unconscious. And sometimes people say when I'm running this session, you know, early on, well, shall we pack up and go home now then, Lynn? Because if 93% of the impact I'm having is unconscious, how do you ever change it? And to change it, you have to get your head around this next model and you have to believe it. I totally believe it. Call it the Mercedes model freeze. It's about understanding there's a really strong correlation between three things. The only thing we ever see of each other is our behaviour, made up of our words, tone of voice and body language. But behind anybody's behaviour sits two crucial things, their thoughts and their feelings. If you ever change any one of these three, it always changes the other two. And I do a lot of work involving, I suppose, some voice changes and all sorts of things to help people realise how you can come in at here to improve relationships, but also, more importantly, how you can come in here. And it, it's not only that you have to do something different, you have to think something different before you've got a chance of going anywhere. It's a good session. It works both at work and home. Thanks very much. Gone on a long time. Thanks. <laughs>